Hey everybody, this is the Indie Amps Picasso demo. I want to take a chance to just briefly walk through um, what this thing does and kind of the intention of it and and how we use it here at the Indie Amp Studios. Um, so this this preamp is built around 12x7 tubes. It is uh, they were they were chosen and kind of built around because I just really enjoy the sound of them. I enjoy how they break up. I also enjoy kind of the the overtones that they have when pushed a little bit. Um, they're just wonderful sounding tubes. However, you can swap those out without a rebias with any other 12AX7 style, so like a 12AT7, 12AY7, 12AU7. You'll have varying results as far as the, uh, the sound response, obviously. Um, just they have different gain makeups, they have a different um, capacity, they have a lot of different things about them that'll change how it sounds, but you can feel free to try all different types. There are uh, two of them in there. And so um, the, the idea of the Picasso is I really wanted it to be kind of like the go-to vocal channel uh, as well. Kick drum, sound amazing through its snare, toms, uh, just a lot of things sound great through the Picasso, really anything to be perfectly honest with you, but it was vocals were kind of what I had in mind more than anything else. So as far as the controls are concerned, you have your input gain, you have your low, mid, high, you get your switches to support those. Uh, you also have your air and your trim. It's just a standard trim, standard gain. And then you also have your compressor, and then you have a style switch for your compressor. And, and the point of that is to uh, allow you to compress the full range or compress more the high and high mids more than the rest. So it's kind of like a DSing mode. In fact, it's quite good at that. Um, and so when you're when you're trying to work with this whole unit, the best way to think about it would be a tube pre mixed into a um, Michelangelo style EQ, granted modified to work with this sort of topology, but then a, a Pollock style compressor in smooth mode. Uh, it, for me, it's helpful to think of it that way because it's all kind of one ecosystem. In other words, you can't break them apart and expect each one of them to operate properly because all of them have been merged together into one single unit and one single circuit. So for instance, the compression happens at the same place that you, most of your gain is happening. So you can't take that out of the circuit, otherwise it doesn't sound like the circuit, and the, and the EQ is happening in between the gain stages. So it's, it's all kind of mixed together into one consistent ecosystem that just sounds amazing on just about everything I've put it through. Um, one of the additions to this unit, though, that's very recent, in fact, there's no label on it right here, but it will be going forward, is this switch right here. It's a three-way switch. And it allows you to switch the impedance of the uh, of the input of the circuit, um, and it'll affect the the XLR input on the back. Speaking of which, there's one XLR input, one XLR output, but it'll also affect your DI because the impedance is actually happening on this on the secondary portion of the transformer, and it's extremely useful for different things that you're trying to record. So if you're plugging a bass into it or a guitar or whatever. Or if you're plugging a mic into it, like a ribbon, it'll it'll be affected in varying degrees depending on what the input impedance is that those different things like to see. So for instance, right now we're wide open. This is the highest impedance level. If you switch it here, it drops it just a little bit. And you can hear the volume decrease as well. Check, check, check. So you can you can hear that it's a little bit more open, a little bit more raw here. Drops just a little bit right there, becomes a little bit more linear. And then as you flip it all the way to here, you're actually going to hear a substantial difference in tone. In fact, uh, in this particular microphone, I'm hearing a little bit of a drop off the highs and the articulation, a little bit flatter of a sound, which can be really great for certain things and not great for others. Um, and so what, I'm gonna, what I want to do right now is just go through some of the EQ uh, settings so you can kind of hear the sweep of them with my voice. Um, check, 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 check. You can hear the lows start to really boost here. And I'm going to go ahead and flip the low switch right there, and you can hear the change. So it's really attacking kind of just everything below 80. Um, check, check, check. All right, so we're going to lower this now, and you can hear it's very, very powerful. It just drops everything. And then some of them come back in when you flip the switch down. So here we are back at neutral. And then your mids, check, check, check. So so it's going real AM kind of radio sound here. And and now we can really scoop out. And you can see why a lot of aggressive kick sounds would go great with this particular mid control. Check, 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 check. So the wide control and a little bit narrower of a control there. And then we're going to move to our highs. Lots of articulation here, and if you flip it up, you can see it's a little bit more aggressive on the highs, especially on this microphone. Check, 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 check. Dropping it down, super dark, super dark. Check, 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 check. Okay, so 
that's that, and then the air control. Believe it or not, the air control actually shifts a little bit with this, just like with the Michelangelo with the calibration controls and the aggression control. The air will shift around a little bit as far as what it does. But in this setting, it'll sound like this. Check, check, one, two, test, one, two, check, 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 one, two, test, test, test. You can hear, especially on this microphone, it's just the just super, super highs just get boosted a little bit. As you change this, then obviously this will become more and less effective depending on where it's set. Which again, is true to the form in the Michelangelo. And then, um, as far as the compressor is concerned, you, um, you can see your gain reduction right here in this LED. And so let me go ahead and start messing with this. Check, 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 check. You can see how it's really starting to hit hard there. But this is the general setting of the compressor. So you can hear as I'm getting louder and I'm talking louder, it's not really getting any louder. In fact, when I'm really, really quiet, it's the same volume. Check, 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 check. This compressor is extremely powerful. Now let me flip it over to de-essing. Check, 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 one, two, test, one, two. Sorry, I was, I had that backwards. Test, 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 that's the de-essing mode. Ha! Check, 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 one, two, test, 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 check, check, check. You can hear this one is compressing full range. Um, and when it compresses full range, it's actually, you'll hear the articulation up top consistently with the way it was before. And then over here, obviously your lows and your low mids come out, but you can't hear the highs as much because it's, it's inhibiting those. Test, test, check, 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 one, two, test. Let me pull it away. Check, 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 check. All right, we're going to go back to the regular mode. Ooh, I just clipped the converters. Check, 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 one, two. Check, check. Obviously, I'm going for extreme settings here, but you get the idea. So check one, two, test, test. All right, so that was a, a bit of a haphazard kind of walk through <laughs> with, with this particular um, unit. Oh, the boost control. Let me let me give you some boost control here. Check, 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 check. Uh, so as soon as I did that, you're hearing overdrive happening. So that's a little bit of too much gain here. And I can choose to clean that up by either turning this down, obviously. Check, check, check. I'm turning the trim up. Check, 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 check. Or I can bring it back with my distortion. Check, 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 but then flip this down here. Check, 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 check. So there are multiple ways that you can use to kind of clean it up. Uh, just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and see how much distortion I can coax out of this, which is not a ton, but it's some. Check, 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 one, two, test, one, two. So obviously this has quite a bit of gain on tap when you want it. You can kind of clean it up here or there. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's just fun to goof around and come up with all sorts of different sounds. Anyway, there, there are really no bad settings on this unit. It just adds a real thickening polish to it no matter what you do. Um, it is just a great, great unit for a wide variety of things, but especially vocals, because it always has that just kind of that, that richness, that thickness, and this little bit of an overdrive saturation to it that you can hear at all times on this unit, which I really appreciate. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go grab a guitar, and I'm going to show you the response of the DI, especially with this impedance switch, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And I'll kind of turn the knobs a little bit just so you get an idea.
Thank you.